welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Thanks for listening. You know, my wife Vicki and I have owned and operated our photography studio, V Gallery, for 20 years now. White House has been our lab for the last 16 of those years, and we could not be happier. White House is a family-run business, just like ours. If you haven't already, check them out at whcc.com. And if you want to drop me a line, feel free to email me at jed at whcc.com. I don't know what state you're in, geographically or psychologically. I know this past month has seemed more like a year to many of us, and of course I have no idea how much longer this strangeness will last. But sometimes I gather comfort in the little things, like a smile, or a giggle, or even a full-blown guffaw. And speaking of laughter, I got to sit with a couple dudes who really set the bar high for podcasts in our industry. Gary Hughes and Boo Ray Perry joined me at WPPI a few months ago, or was it a few years ago? I, I can't remember. In any case, we had a ball talking about all kinds of stuff. I felt like I was in the middle of a comedy duo act as we discussed everything from internet trolls to self-driving ride chairs and how everything is more amazing than ever. Look, I know that right now things may be amazing in a lot of ways, but it's also a very strange, crazy time. My hope is that the light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter. My hope is that you are safe and sound right now. And my hope is that you enjoy this silly conversation between three goofballs who just wanted to make each other laugh a bit. Stay strong, friends. <laughs> you may or may not believe this. I've been wanting to talk to you for a really long time. And I, I know you're not going to believe it. Because are, we, you, are we live? Is this like going to be actually possibly we're, on we're the We're recording. It's right? actually possibly. But you never know you when could, he's going to start. But it might actually possibly not be either. So I really want you to know that. Like the, One of the reasons I'm excited about this time today. Yes. So I always enjoy hanging out with Gary. I've known Gary for a while. But you're, you're, the, you're the golden goose He's the unicorn. Right well, um, I don't know if you know. But there is this thing called email. <laughs> and but I don't know. But I have know I have other. an email address. <laughs> you put that into a little form, and then you can invite me to be on your podcast you can at send any it time. Electronically, but we I don't know, and you don't know me from Adam. And I thought, like, there's I, there's generally connections. So you didn't approach me because you thought that that I would poo poo you. Maybe. Really? <laughs> Hi, this is Jed, White House Custom Color yes. guy. And, uh, you know, I've Barry, Gary's been on the podcast a couple of times. In you fact, pretty much been, every person you know has been on my podcast. You wouldn't have been the first to poo-poo me. Uh, there would, not, there would, there would be no poo-poo. Before. Also, poo in my mind, you are, okay, this, maybe this. No, please, please compliment me in front of Gary. He no, needs more well, of this. Well, you're the man at this. You're good at, you're really good at this. Like I've heard your podcast. Oh, I think you're very good at it. Well, I, I've listened to your podcast but like, and I don't listen to anyone's podcast. <laughs> That's fair. He does not. He only listens to our podcast so he can hear himself yeah. and let me know. He goes, are you, Gary, were your vocals louder than mine this week? <laughs> I they? think there's like a little tinge of yeah. you more than me. <laughs> like, like, look, buddy, you can have first billing when you edit all these episodes. You can <laughs> not, make yourself that's not the true. loudest one. That's that's not true because I don't listen to his vocals. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even hear it. You don't he, even want his track. We record our podcast over Skype because Boo Ray's in Tampa and I'm in Orlando. Right. And but what we do is we record our audio individually on our own computer. That's yeah, that's the we, way to do it. And we do a backwards count down so I can sync up the audio right. later. Right. So Bure has a recording of his own audio minus mine on his computer. That's what, so I that's listen what he listens yeah. to. That's what I listen to. With like minutes of silence <laughs> in between and then just him responding to me. <laughs> just Or as we like to say, just the good parts. Oh. <laughs> Just the good parts of the podcast. You're not wrong. Well, we have um, one of the things that I do when we edit the podcast is, and I hope this doesn't uh, ruin it for uh, our tens of listeners, <laughs> but when Boo Ray and I are talking over each other, because we're both very enthusiastic and want to get whatever's in our brain out of our mouths immediately, but most of the time, if we start talking over each other, Boo Ray cannot be talked over. No. He just gets louder and That's louder right. until, you don't stop. until you yeah. stop. Nobody so, puts baby in a corner. No, no. <laughs> And so Nobody I just puts Boo Ray in a corner, yeah. and I and I just uh, I take my vocals. I just drop the audio on mine. I know, like because if, if I'm getting to a point, if I stop and let you interrupt me, 
then I will forget the point that I was getting to. So I'm like, I'm going to bulldoze right through you until you, I get to the end yeah, of my because point. because I still have, I have this yeah, in my I brain right and now. Then, then you can say what you want to say, but don't try to ask me to pause in mid-play because I'm, I can't remember the notes anymore. It is funny, in all seriousness, I was going to ask you guys specifically about how intentional you handle like the logistical pieces of the dynamic that you guys have on your podcast. Like, <laughs> is there somebody that's like a, cause you're a radio guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was. And, and so you know that like when you have a, like generally when you have a group of people that can be a, a mess for one thing. Like if those have, radio shows with five yes, co-hosts or it's whatever. Just a, yeah. Especially the Q if morning the, zoo. Right. If exactly. Especially if you have people in there that don't understand the essential protocol in that, there's generally a ringleader. Now, there's probably a yeah. specific name for yeah. that person. I would say that you're the host of the show. Like, See, that's where you're wrong. So, well, <laughs> I, I, you know, unsurprisingly. You read the intro. Wrong You always again. say, welcome to the Photobomb Podcast. I would say yes. Thing. Okay, yes. If you're talking about who's the host, then yeah, I come across as the host because I do the intro and the outro. So right. I get that, sure. But the producer, you know, who's the real guy running the show uh -huh. is Gary. Gary's the producer of the show. Well, I actually had to convince him to do the podcast with me in the first place because the first time I approached Bure about it, <laughs> we had met through the our, the Florida Professional Photographers Association and hung out at the convention. And we're just sitting there. And I had had a podcast in the early, early days that never did anything with because I in when podcasts were like brand new. Yeah. And that just sort of went away. And I'd always wanted to do a podcast again because I liked it so much. And Bure and I were sitting, we're having such a good back and forth. The banter was so good. Uh -huh. I said To be fair, we were hammered. We were very <laughs> oh we were chalet. Which I didn't feel we could sustain week after week. <laughs> Well, were we that's gonna the secret. Are we gonna run out of booze? <laughs> that's, the, that's the secret. Just saying. <laughs> so, so here's I, the plan. Yeah. Every Sunday we get hammered <laughs> and then talk to and each other and do a podcast. It'll be great. great. <laughs> so I, I said to Boo Ray, I was like, "Man, we should do a podcast." And he goes, "No, no." <laughs> you said no. <laughs> I was. I mean, it's just like that too. It wasn't like, hmm. He goes, "We should do a podcast." I'm like, "No, why? No, absolutely not. Why no? Uh, because th th we're so niche." That is it, niche, niche, N niche, niche. I don't niche. care. We're Doesn't so matter. niche that niche I'm like, the, we'll, we'll never get, we'll never get, yeah. we'll never get a big enough audience, yeah. right? A, um, and I didn't want to fail at it. I didn't want to. Oh, I didn't want to. That's honest. You know, I, mean, I didn't. Well, I just, it just. So you're an honest and also, dude. And also, you have to understand. I know how much work it is to do, and other people don't know. Gary didn't know. Right. Like you think about doing the podcast now and how much you've learned and, and how much better you've gotten out of it. Yeah, yeah. And when you decided to do a podcast, you didn't think that'd be the case. You thought it'd be great day one. It'll be a great podcast. And Who now if you go back to listen to yes, this and now if you go back and listen to day one, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe we put this trash out. Yeah, the thing is, I think that <laughs> podcasts are pretty much about for people, you only have so much time in your life for podcasts because people listen to them while they jog or while they yeah. get ready, while they right. drive on their commute. But right. people don't like sit in their living room with nothing else going on and listen to a podcast. Or you no. might listen while you're editing, but there's a limited amount of time for that. It's so not can, 1931. So, so for people, or, who, yeah, for people right. who listen to podcasts, there, um, there's a limited amount of space. And so right. if you take on board a new podcast, you basically have to stop listening to another one. Right. And so you're asking somebody to give up another podcast right. to start listening to yours. Also, to get people to do a thing is difficult. Here's a fact is 100% true. It is 100% easier not to do a thing than to do a thing. Did you know that? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> True. I actually had to think about it for a second. I it was like, a, this sure. sounds like I'm being trapped. Is this a trick? Much easier. It is 100% easier not to do stuff. That is. I have a stuff. long history of not doing stuff, and I can tell you it's much easier. It's much easier. Life is so much easier. And that was the main reason when I said no. I'm like, no, I don't want to work at it. I don't want yeah. to work on it. You don't want it to I be don't, a thing. You know, and so he kept bugging me about it, and I said, finally, okay, I'll do it, but here's the conditions. Uh, I spent 20 years in radio, 20 years of doing what other people told me to do yeah. and not having the show that I wanted. Yeah. I said, so I'll do it on one condition. A, I don't do any work. That's true. You I do, do it all. All the work. I go, you do all the work. All I do is show up and do the show. Mm -hmm. I said, and B, we do what we want to do and do not listen to market research or this is what other podcasts are doing or yeah. anything. We just do it as if, as if it's not even a podcast. Just right. do it like we're going to get together for an hour and talk or mm -hmm. just going to have a beer. That's what we're going to do. And that will be fun. And if people like it, fine. And if they don't, we'll like doing it. So it won't matter. But the worst thing in the world is to do something you don't really like doing 
and then have it fail. Right. Right. And all <laughs> that like, time was wasted. It was the only thing that's holding you on yeah. while you're doing this thing that's putting a piece of yourself out there. Right. The only thing that's holding you on while you're doing this thing you don't really like is the hope that it might actually become something. Right. And then maybe you can actually maybe get to do what you actually like. <laughs> Conversely, though, you'll continue to do something you like even if it's not terribly successful. Right, which is, which is why I said that's, is where what this, were, that's what this has yeah, to be. Right. This has to be, so I, I went into it from day one, like it's the kids putting on a show in the barn. No one is going to listen to this, so I'm just going to have fun. Mm -hmm. And it ends up that that is what became the moniker of the podcast, was that we were just two guys having fun, right. and it did catch on. Right. You know, but if it hadn't caught on, I never would have regretted it. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny thing. now because we, we, you know, if you go to iTunes and you're looking like our iTunes reviews, because we describe the show as basically it's like drive time morning radio where the host happen to be photographers. Mm -hmm. So we talk about anything that just sort of pops into our head, and then we have a section related to photography news or whatever, what's going on in the industry, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But the reviews that we'll get, like a one star review that says. <laughs> It's just these guys rambling about nothing. I'm like, you get it. <laughs> yes. That's it. You we got should it. Get a, we should, should get a five-star review from you. That should be a you. five. That should you be five. Act, you That's absolutely. the thing we like the most about the show. It's exactly you how we bill ourselves. Yeah. Well, right. most of us are photographers. We're solo entrepreneurs, right? And so being connected to this is like having coworkers. Right. And so listening to just two photographers who do it full time for a living every day and know what it's like and the ins and outs and the struggles that we have personally and professionally and the things that we think about, it's relatable to people who sort of get that. But some people, I don't know what people want from a photography ish, I call it a photography ish podcast. What they want from a photography podcast is like, do you want us to just bore you to death and break down the technical aspects of the inverse square law or something like I, so maybe some people do want that but here's the thing there are so many podcasts like that already we're not inspirational and we have no desire to be inspirational don't you think the malcontents are always looking for the same thing i feel like the people that are upset about whatever content yeah they're ingesting are upset by the fact that whatever that happens to be isn't giving them an easier way to do things. Yeah. I, well, I, I just tell people it's free. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's free. Everybody relax. Or, I'm sorry you didn't like the free content we put out. Move along. <laughs> yeah, you got to stop and leave a nasty letter on your way out the door because right, it's not right, your thing. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I have one one-star review that just says, this is bad. <laughs> well, after like the third, after like the third episode, it was after number three, I think, or number two. It was at the very beginning, and I was just like, "Really? I've been what, listening what to this What made you do that? You know, I, it's like Gary, Gary's favorite. Show me on the doll where the podcast touched you, because <laughs> how is it that that's Gary, that's Gary's joke? Because how did you see? How did you how did you listen to this podcast? And then you were so driven with anger and rage Why? that you had to go and find a review site so that you could leave one star review <laughs> and say, this is bad. This is bad. I mean, I would expect a soliloquy if you were so moved to go and write the bad and review. And I also would respect that. Like if you yes, gave I would me that. like yes. a, it, one reason, give me one specific, what did I do? Or what did somebody else do? Or what happened now. that you didn't like? Right. Tell me, Right. I may not address it or <laughs> but care. But instead you get, this is bad. This is bad. Being mad at a podcast with the plethora of It's podcasts, ridiculous. It's absolutely like, it's, it's, all yes. you, it's, it's like going into Target and being pissed off that there's an ugly shirt in there that you don't Or being mad. It's or, like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I don't care to buy those bedazzled jeans, but I'm not going to leave Target a one-star review because, because they, they carried them. a pair of jeans I don't <laughs> right. like. Right. I don't right. understand. Like, there's a, you know how many podcasts there are? Just go find another one. Yeah. No hard feelings. Yeah. But did they, I, like, did they read the description and get really excited mm. about it? Mm. And then, like, we were just a disappointment I to did them? not empower them. I like, I, like I said, I would in the description. I would, you're very empowering. I get it on YouTube uh, with my YouTube channel where they will, they, here's what's so horrible about reviewers on all this stuff. They will have in their mind what this genre should be. Yeah. And if you are not meeting what is in their mind, it should be that genre. In their minds. Then you're horrible. Right. Like with a YouTube channel, right. they're like, well, this was not, this review was not as in depth as it should have been. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm not a reviewer. <laughs> it's a YouTube channel where it's just a guy going, hey man, here's what I think of this camera. Right. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, friggin' uh, DP review. DP review. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's what you, have you, I'm sorry, have you been to YouTube? It's just, you know, it's my daughter doing makeup tutorials. Are you upset because she's not as good as the person at Sephora? You know, whatever, you know, it's, it's no, it's just people turning on a camera and talking. Yeah. What do you care? Yeah. Why are yeah. you so hurt? Yeah. 
Just move along. That's a that's kind of a the way things are in general right now, though. Yeah. Right. Well, I, consumers are empowered to get their get feedback more than ever, mm-hmm. and and very often because of reviews, the providers of the content, the business owners are essentially powerless against that. And I think the percentage of people, it's like 60% of people consult reviews on products and do research before they buy it. Like 60% of Amazon I reviewers read. I, I don't buy anything without reading reviews. I do all the time. But the truth is that sort of if you put all of that together, the good, the bad, people are pretty savvy about it. And, the, and, and they will read reviews and they'll go, well, clearly that person was just unreasonable. That dude's a troll. I mean, yeah, the I trolls stand out pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. People are savvy about it. And, they'll right. go, and in fact, I would say that if a restaurant has like 300 reviews and it's got five stars and no bad reviews, I feel like they just got all their friends and family oh, to leave you're, reviews. You're suspicious yeah. of that. I like a nice restaurant with four and a half stars. I like the four and a half star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's right, what, right, yeah. Right. You don't, 274 reviews, four and a half stars. Because guess what? You're I'm a in. restaurant serving thousands of people a year. You're not going to crush it every single time. Right. That's not possible. Right. Like there's an authenticity in it. I got my first, we talked about this on our show, got my first one star review. Uh, for, uh, in my photography studio. Oh, the studio. Oh, right. Man. And the guy had come in and his company had paid for his headshot yeah. to come in. I photographed their entire staff. He wasn't there that day. He came in. I did a perfectly serviceable professional quality headshot. He saw the image on the iPad before he left, selected one, said he was happy, and then went back and left a one-star review at midnight two weeks later that said, I did not have a good experience. And that's all he wrote. For Pete, you, you, I see? don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so I ended up having to reshoot the guy, and he went back and changed his review to four stars. So well, you got four out of it. At yeah. Least. Well, but I, if not for Google reviews, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have just said, "No, you approved the image before you walked out the door." Oh. I'd have said, "There's a reshoot fee." Oh. But the power of that made me. I, I succumbed to the pressure of having it. a one star review. I get it. What are things that you? I'm curious about a lot of things, but what are what are the things that you two disagree on? I want to know. Interesting, because you have you have such a great, you know, rapport with each other. You have such a great. It's, it's probably easier to say what do we agree on. It's a shorter list. Do you, do you feel <laughs> I mean, like we, you we disagree, disagree on more things than oh, not? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, but can, I mean, can like, you have a really? Can we you disagree a, on what's the best Hall and Oates song? Yeah. Can you? I mean, can you? Can you have a good? fun friendship with somebody that you agree with on everything i mean there's what's the fun there's never an argument there's never a debate i would say that we're pretty simpatico but we don't need to disagree on stuff because boo ray will argue the other point just for fun you'll be yeah, if you, you like just for you fun. like to play the devil's advocate. oh i do there okay. is mm-hmm. boo ray could seriously he could start a podcast by himself where it was he would just bring an expert on and argue the other point regardless of what it is my wife is trying to get me to do that nobody absorbs information and brings logical thought and argument to a, to a subject more than this man. If I ever have something that I need to think all the way around it before I make a decision, he's my go-to. I have, will, se- I have several friends who use me in that respect. Yeah, I, w- I, I would not make a serious life decision why I do without this? bouncing it off Boo Ray. Why, sh- why shouldn't I do this? Because you're adept you. at seeing all the angles. I just am. I don't know where it came from. But if you come at me, if, if I'm in a room and there's five people and they go, this is the best thing ever, I'm immediately going to try and punch holes in it. Right. Because that's how and you, you Well, you know, there, there were presidents who would do that. They, if they were trying to pass some... Uh, some idea or some law, they're like, find the smartest guy we know and have them take the other side. Right. If I can't convince him, then it's right. not a very good idea. Right. And that's my thing. If I, if I start coming at you, if you can't, can't convince me, then maybe you're, you need to take a better look at your idea. So have you not had those moments and issues? I can't think. Nothing really that we d- That we disagree on? I mean, there's like, yeah, like he said, the best Hall Notes song is clearly Sarah Smile. It really isn't. And then he thinks that it's something else. But, but uh, I mean, it's a good one. I'm not saying it isn't. But Sarah Smile's a great song. But Rich Girl's great. You like, saying Rich Girl's number one? It's it's like Sarah Smile with all I mean, the. It may not be top five. It. It's yeah. Rich Girl. Mm-hmm. I don't like Rich Girl. Thank you. Sorry, man. You're wrong. It reminds <laughs> me of it's annoying. It's annoying to me the way that uh, uh, Sus Studio is annoying. Oh to me no, as well. no, nothing's worse than Sus Studio. That, what was the song you said the other day? Sus Studio. Sus Studio is annoying. <laughs> oh, I can't handle it. It's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. Would you rather yeah. listen to Sus Studio or Mambo Number no. Five? Oh, I'll take Susudio over Mambo. Yeah, I'll take just, anything just over Just because it was, yeah, Mambo number no. five. That's a terrible song. Yeah, I know. It's, it's I'll the, take anything Lou over Mambo number no. five. Vega or something. That's terrible. Yeah. We, you know, it's funny. Bure and I talk pretty much every day. What, it was funny. We, uh, we talk on Facebook Messenger. That's like our preferred method of communication. Because I would send Bure stuff through Facebook, and then I text him, and he said, he goes, 
Can you just pick one, please? Yeah. I thought, I thought you were going to say, we you did to me today. Messenger because I won't give him my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So we have to yeah. use my messenger. wife will do that. She'll send me something on Messenger, and then she'll send me something in mess in in uh, Facebook Messenger, and I'm like, just pick one, and that's our every day. Yeah, that's the story of my life every day with my wife. I'll get an email, a text, and a Facebook message within an hour <laughs> no. from my wife about three separate things, and then she'll say, "But I emailed that to you," and I'll check my email. No, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I know I did. But it's in another, you know, it's it's on right. Facebook or it's, you know, via text. Let's have which, one archive where everything yeah. everything exists. Please. I've yeah. never deleted our Facebook Messenger conversation. It's funny. You said that to me the other day, like it was a big deal. I don't think I've ever deleted any Facebook Messenger. Oh, Am I supposed I, to be delete? delete? Am I supposed I, oh, yeah. to be deleting Facebook messages? messages? I do. I Are there do. things because, that need uh, to be deleted? No, not really. It's just when someone irritates me and I don't want it. Like the last thing they <laughs> said. Because you don't want to have like, access to it later yeah. on. I know. I don't, I don't go care. Back. <laughs> I don't care. That, that happened to me last night when uh, someone was texting me and I was like, I cannot possibly text this person because they will find out how completely trashed I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I was you just give like. Give yourself away. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you've really made up a mind to tie one on, the best thing you can do for yourself is just shut your phone off. And yes. put it away. Leave yes. it in the hotel room. Don't like, even give yourself the opportunity to right. drunk dial or drunk text or whatever. Oh no, no, that's bad. Because guess I mean, it's funny how people think that uh, that might not be there anymore. But once you commit it to the digital universe, it's there forever. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's there forever. I have a friend of mine who's an attorney, and she told me that that Facebook and Instagram play a huge role in almost every divorce in court. And that's yeah. why you find a lot of attorneys don't use social media that much because anything you put, for example, because they know better. Well, like if you were late so many times picking up the kids and, and that you're violating the terms of your parental visitation agreement, they can go back and like, Oh, on that day, it oh, yeah. looks like he was at a bar when he was supposed to be picking up the kids. He yep. checked in at the whatever downtown. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's horrible. It used to be, you had to hire a private investigator for that. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Facebook is yet, yet another industry that's being destroyed by the <laughs> digital age. <laughs> it never ends. Tra travel agents and private detectives. <laughs> we saw earlier when we got up here, we've been trying to figure out how to get one. We saw the self-driving Uber here in Vegas. There's like an yeah. Uber with no Yeah, saw driver. a self-driving Lyft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but a thing. But it's got a guy. But, it, but a person has to sit there. Right. Is, it, is that a legal thing? Like yeah, yeah. A person still has to be sitting there. And right. I'm like... And I'm like how can I get this job? Your just, job is yeah. just to sit in the car right. on your phone, I guess, all day right. because you don't drive the car. I get a lot right. more reading done that way. Right? Yeah. They're there just in case something happens to happen. Right. But which I mean, is, do they make not, the same money as a regular Uber driver? Because a what a question. gig. This, a is, this is the crazy part about it is if every car on the road was a self-driving automated vehicle, there would be almost no accidents. Like auto accidents kill so many people. Yes. And how so many people die in car accidents or injured severely because of drunk drivers, bad decisions, idiots who just got a Mustang, people who back in park, you know, communists, whatever. People die in car wrecks all the time. But one machine makes a mistake when 50,000 people die like daily. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, no, no, self-driving cars are bad. We're going to push right. that back yes. another 10 years. And right. it's like, no, yeah. well, yeah, that will happen from time to time. Yeah. But you're way more likely to get into an accident like on your own. Well, there was this book of there's a, years ago, there's this little books that were probably called the book of questions. And uh, it was just questions. And you would just ask that question, and then people could discuss it, like a, like you know, discuss like, a, a like an icebreaker party. Yeah, game. right. But and I, I bought a couple of them, like on cross country trips with my girlfriend, and like we'll go through this book, and it'll be something to talk about. And I remember one of them was something like, if they invented, uh, if they invented a uh, teleportation device that could teleport you instantly to anywhere in the world, but one in every hundred thousand people would just be killed instantly. Would you support it? And would you ride on it? And you're debating it and da, da 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 And then later you find out that that's the exact ratio of people who die in airline accidents. Oh, <laughs> and the whole it's the point same was, number. And, and yeah, or something, I don't, I don't know what the number was, right. but the point was, you already do support it. Right. And you already do do it. Right. It, but now when we put coaxing in this different idea that when you get in here, you could just die. 
Well, now that's crazy. That's but you do that already. That's and, interesting. And, and when you look at the statistics for cars, it's even greater. A lot greater. Yeah, yeah. it's really good to play blackjack with. By the way, <laughs> I just, well, this, this stuff. This stuff. Me. You know me. This is my pet peeve stuff. It makes me crazy when someone's upset and they won't let their kid play in the yard because they think they might be in danger. But their kid plays high school football. Okay, your kid's in much more danger playing high school football than they are playing out in the yard when they're six. We years talked old. about this the first time we did a podcast. Is how many parents are afraid to let their kids do stuff. And if you look up the numbers, the vast majority of kids who are taken, like snatched yes. off the street, it's by one of their own it's parents. hundred. There's about 100 kidnappings a year, and 99 of them are by relatives. Your kid is not in danger playing in your yeah, yard. There aren't just vans of just dudes yes. out there trying to snatch kids off the street. But we said... However, <laughs> if your daughter is the fly girl on the cheerleader team, mm. yeah, she may end up paralyzed. More, <laughs> right, right, because they're flipping around yeah. all over the place and... We did talk about that, and it makes me. But I'm still, I still have that issue. Me too. I well, got three daughters, a, dude. Well, what it is though is that parents are worse aware of, are afraid of the worst case scenario, and something like a kidnapping is the most fear stricken thing that could possibly yes. you could imagine having to your child. Worst and so you yes. overreact to protect it. But it's just funny that. Like in Florida, especially, I'm not going to let my kid play in the yard because it's too dangerous. But I have a swimming pool. Which is the number one cause of death for women, kids under the age of four in right. the state of Florida. Right. Uh, right. No, I get what you're saying, and yeah. I, I don't dispute it in any way, shape, or form. And yet, I know that my fears in that realm are irrational to some degree, to you, a, a you, large degree, and I still have them. Yes, They're that's, still there. You know, that's what it is. And yeah. my mom used to be like, "Yeah, we'll see. If, you know, go out. The sun's out. Go outside." Oh my God! Yeah. And if I, I came home before sunset, I was told to go back outside. Yeah. What we were talking about. Now my kids are all like. Daddy, do something. Do a project with me. And I'm like, your job is to entertain your children. If I had ever gone to my dad and said, Dad, I'm bored. My God in heaven. I would bored have just... Is, bored is the, the F word. Yeah, I'd have, been, I'd have been pulling pulling weeds yeah. or doing something terrible. Yeah. And so we just, just we got away from the house. Yeah. My it must kids... have been really nice to be a parent back then when you had all the free time when your kids weren't <laughs> hanging around the house bugging <laughs> you. All the free time that my parents must have had. My dad just oh my sitting God, there yeah. drinking a scotch, you know? <laughs> like, they complained about raising me. I was like, I was gone half the time. You didn't yes. raise me? <laughs> you didn't raise me. On I was Saturday, raised I was... by the street, son. Oh, yeah. I was raised by the street. Manatee <laughs> Creek, Port Salerno, Florida. <laughs> I was on. Major, I was raised on the street. I did my nickel. Oh, that, that, there is some truth to that. Don't feel bad because my wife won't let my 14-year-old and 16-year-old daughter walk to the grocery store. And the only thing between my house and the grocery store is seven houses and a hospital. And like she, won't, she won't. I'm let really. Them go? I'm like. She, they literally are walking through the hospital parking lot. <laughs> So if they do get hit by a car, they're right there. They're right there at the I'm ER. Like, just let them go pick up some friggin' pasta sauce <laughs> so we can have spaghetti. Can you please just let them go get the pasta sauce? No, I'll drive them. I'll drive them. And it's the, I'll drive them with the look of, you don't love our children. Yeah, uh, that's the piece. You obviously don't piece. love our children yeah. the way that I do. I love them much more Because than you're you willing do. to let them go out into right. the Beirut that is our neighborhood. <laughs> Although I think, you know, with kids, there's a certain amount that you can control and a certain amount that you can't, right? Like with, with my two-year-old and my, three, my five-year-old, the personalities are completely opposite. The oldest, Ellie, my five-year-old, she's like the people pleaser, the rule follower. She, everybody has to have the same. Everything is equality. My two-year-old wouldn't pee on you if you were on fire. My two-year-old is such a gangster, man. Mm. We, we took away their, her pacifier. You know, because she had her pacifier until she turned two, and we finally got rid of it. But her little baby sister, who's three months old, has a little pacifier oh. for her teeth starting to come in. Mm -hmm. And so we, every once in a while, we catch her having stolen her baby sister's pacifier. So we're coming back from Disney, and we put the girls, when we leave Disney, and we have annual passes, we go all the time. And we put them in their pajamas, and we put them in the minivan, and they fall asleep on the way home. It's a really good deal. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So I come out, I'm putting the big double stroller in the back of the van, and I shut out. I come around, and there's Josie, my two year old. She's standing just inside the door of the minivan standing there with her sister's pacifier in her mouth and she's just sucking on it making eye contact and I go hey you're not supposed to and she didn't break eye contact she reached over while maintaining eye contact pushed the button to close the minivan and the door just closed in front of her <laughs> making eye contact the whole time it was amazing like, a sim like Maggie and the Simpsons yep, did not care dude yeah I, I, I asked her to pick up a toy uh, a couple of weeks ago because she put it down on the floor and went to do something else. I said, Josie, you got to go pick up that toy and put it back in your room. She looks at the toy, kicks it down the hall towards her room and walks away. <laughs> it's almost like... She that's such a boss. You're almost like, I don't you almost want to applaud the behavior. Yeah, I yes. do. Like you have to temper it. 
right. but I don't want to crush it. No. And here's the thing. I think I'll be totally fine letting her walk to the grocery store by right. herself. <laughs> I right. don't think that'd be a problem there. Right. Right. I have a question. Uh, when do we start the podcast? Oh, yeah. What, do we, what Are we supposed to talk about something like <laughs> are photography, we, uh, business related or important? I, I feel like this you. is just this a This is a lot up. like our podcast. Yes, I know. <laughs> this is not your podcast. I've listened to your podcast. Your podcast is so... Gary, the delicious dish. If you could, <laughs> you're like so intimate and uh, like a good reviewer. A, a good, I mean, you're a, a great interviewer. Yeah, Jed has a hard, very hard to be, very hard to be. One of the reasons that I have, you know, been so shocked that you have so, you know, just blatantly avoided having me on your show, <laughs> is that I've, unlike every other show, I think I'd enjoy being on your show, and uh, and the fact that you have ignored that has been oh, detrimental. I do apologize. I do apologize. You had Gary on the podcast twice. Yeah. 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 Fair. This is technically this is my num- third time. This is twice. Number three. This is his third time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do I not read into that? The Why? obvious animosity that is there. Why do we? It's very <laughs> passive it aggressive. Obvious. Like, really. Oh, man. Yeah. What, I, think what? It's, I think it's clear. How have, right we, out. how have we never met each other? I don't know. Isn't that weird? I don't know. It it's a, you probably have, if you look at Facebook and how many mutual friends you have, it's probably yeah. the large majority of your entire like. Yeah, there's a good chance time. I have met you and just don't remember it because I I meet so many people. He drinks and you too, I'm sure, right? Uh, meet I a lot meet of people. a lot of people, but I knew that I had. I've known for a long time that I. And you know why? You. Because I am a successful podcaster. It's funny you never had me on the show. Well, I'll be fair. We've never had Jed on our show. The fact that you, the fact that I stick in your head, you How? knew I've never had Booray on the show, and yet I you did. couldn't just pick up the phone. No. So now the I'd podcast is officially. Or that. here's an idea: way ask your scared. buddy, ask your buddy Gary Hughes. I have talked to him about talking to you. Ah. Before. That's initially how this happened. Wait a minute. Thanks, I talked, Jed. I Slowly I turn. <laughs> I step talked to by you. step, inch by inch. I told him that I want to talk to both of you. Oh, on both this, of us. Oh, yeah, of course, both trip. of us. I understand. We're a package deal. You don't want to have George Burns over here without Gracie. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. What song you, are you going to play on the organ so I can dance like a monkey? <laughs> Bicycle built for yeah, two. You wanna, yeah, oh, yeah. by the way, on your third time, bring your lovely spouse along, Gary. <laughs> So, Boomay's huh. got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder when it comes to this issue. <laughs> we, if we want to get, if we want to get down, I mean, to like the literally brass every tats. person I know, it was on your podcast. I finally got to the point where I was like, "There must be a reason. Like, there must be a reason he has We don't know each other. Did you know those people ever? You didn't know those people? I knew. It's extremely rare. Like today, I, I Joel Grimes sat right there, and I was terrified. Wait, I'm sitting in Joel Grimes' seat right now. <laughs> You're sitting right where Joel Grimes sat. And I was terrified because the first time, it was like with you. I was terrified to talk to you initially because the first time I talked to Joel Grimes in my life was in our podcast. Right. Like, like you don't know if you're going to have a good rapport with someone. You have no idea. No. Like, Everybody knows that. There's and, nothing that's worse than an interview that's just crashing because you're just not collect, clicking right. with the person, you know? I try not to release those. Yeah. I've got, <laughs> I've got a Jed, dozen Jed, of them. What's our episode coming out? Do you really? Out? Uh, I have a dozen of them. Do you really? What do you, what do you, say, what do you say to the person when they ask, when's the podcast coming out? So it's not going to come out. And, do you, and why? If they, if they ask me why... I will come up with a reason that is true, <laughs> but not necessarily the entire reason. All right. Why. So, well, one person I just told him because it was terrible, yeah. but I knew the dude pretty well. <laughs> I was like, dude, it was 1130, that, which it was, and you and I just sound terrible, which we do. It was just a really bad right. interview, and so no one's ever going to hear I think that's how many why po- we really don't have guests on our show, yeah. because you and I... But we also, so how, time how many about. podcasts would we have if we had deleted all the ones that were terrible? <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Well, we, have, <laughs> we have 238 episodes yeah. currently, and yeah. I, well, by the time this comes out, I'm sure we'll have more. Yeah. And I think I've probably just trashed about 30 to 40 episodes at least, you know. Like, either I screwed up the audio You or, mean the ones that have, re- that, have, that have been released? The ones that are out there? No, I don't. I mean, what, what do you mean? Like, you're saying you've released 238. Right. And thirty to forty of those are junk. No, no, we've recorded probably four hundred. Oh, you or have three hundred podcasts. Okay, that's what I'm getting. We like, probably recorded three hundred. There's a podcasts. ton of content that no one was well, when ever we first got yeah, together. But, but the ones that, and, yeah, but one of the ones that we delete are like my microphone wasn't on. You know, uh, we, you know, if if the audio works, it goes out no matter how just crappy it is. <laughs> is my fair. point. You actually delete delete because you know it's not up to a standard. We have no standard. <laughs> you don't have a standard. Is my point. Our standard is can you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> 
put it out. That's fair. Because I don't want to do another one. Uh, you I, know? I, I, I get it. I understand. Well, I, you know my... If, you, if you're re- vaguely familiar with my podcast, then you know that my stilo is to talk to somebody about what it is that they want to talk about. Well, you're a very good interviewer. Um, when I heard you, the one that you did with Gary, I was like, wow, that's a, that's a guy who knows what he's doing, and he's saddled with Gary. That poor, <laughs> that poor SOB. Um, and, uh, and, so, and so you're very good at that. But what Gary started to say a minute ago was true. That's part of the reason we don't have guests on the show. And we have people asked to be on the show all the time, and we, don't, we pretty much just completely well, got rid of guests. people assume the reason that we had guests and it doesn't go well is because they'll listen to the show and they're like, oh, this is a comedy. This is funny. So I have to be funny. And so instead of being themselves, oh, they just try really hard to be funny. Okay. Bure and I... It's funny that you think that it's comedy that we do. Yeah. Uh, our, rap- <laughs> our rapport is good. It's just tight back and forth and knowing each other and liking each other. But do you avoid serious topics? Not... I mean, for... Mostly like, we do. Like for an extended avoid period what topic? of time? Serious topics, like Something getting real serious. talks. Oh, no, we have real talk, sure. Nothing, usually not anything deeply emotional, um, but we do talk about business stuff that's fairly serious, and, and you know, but for the most part... Well, I don't mean that something that's innocuous or like doing a, 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 a talking about gear, because you'll do that seriously and throw a few jokes in. And I mean, right. Do you like talk about something with substance? Not often. That's no, serious? No. That's Why would we want to do that? No. Well, that's why I'm asking. No, I'm we not do. saying you should. No, we do. We have, we, we have. I mean, there can be something in the news or some issue that's going on that we'll have an episode that's got something like that. I can think of it one, at least one episode where we talked about something like that. And then when we were over and we were finished with it, um, there was a delay in getting it out. Uh, for some reason and we were like two days behind and Gary finally was like you know I don't know that we want to put that one out anyway and I was like yeah trash it so that was one of the ones that didn't make it and we just dumped it but and that that was dumped because we were like we were talking about a sensitive issue and I'm not entirely sure that we were good enough at making sure that no one was going to be offended or take it bad and it's just not and it's just not worth it we do that a lot but I don't remember what this particular issue was, but I just remember it being, yeah, maybe this one's just too hot. But I mean, in general, if how hard is it these days to even be able to have a conversation, whether you're being serious or even maybe even more it's so, next whether to you're impossible. joking around? It's next to impossible. Without offending somebody. It's next to impossible. You either just have to decide that some people are going to be, it's like having your YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, somebody's always going to have something negative to say. And you have to be fairly thick-skinned. There are a lot of neckbeards out there just trolling on people on the internet. And there's not yeah. a lot you can do about it. But what we do try to do is, whenever somebody subscribes to your podcast and becomes a listener or follows your content, there's a there's an unspoken contract, an agreement that I signed up for this, and so this is what I expect to see more of. And so we are just mostly pretty lighthearted, and that's what people expect. And you know what? Man, we got enough drama all the way around. And here's the other reason why we don't cover too many serious topics because you exist because <laughs> right. i'm you can out do there filling that void yeah but yeah. i mean we do we, we get into it a little bit sometimes and it's almost always on my side because i mean i like having fun but i'm also a guy who i can't stand small talk uh, you know what do you want to talk about religion politics let's go you know what I mean? Let's t- I like to talk about the things that have opinions and, and that people you think like about. You like to talk about religion and politics. Yes, I love he to talk really about does. stuff that's really interesting. I like to talk about stuff. You know, I am fascinated by the fact that your view is so different than mine. Let's talk about that. But, and so if we have that happen on the podcast, more often than not, it's me. And Gary's just like, ha ha, that's funny. Moving on. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> because we don't, want to get into, we don't get into, we want to get into a discussion about that on the podcast. And, uh, and he's right. Yeah, no, it's just, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. I also enjoy those conversations and to- the lot but of the topics. It's just not necessarily we- the best thing for the podcast. Right, the, it, might, it might not be the place because we're not that. That's not what we purported. If we had come out with a with a podcast where we talk about serious issues and we take them seriously, I think that switching tone back and forth makes it incoherent. You don't want to go it's and confusing. do. You don't want to go fifteen to twenty minutes on talking about some serious issue related to politics or religion and then switch over to something lighthearted. It's like po- a podcast isn't. 60 minutes, you know, you don't have, you know, can be, you can't jump around between human interest pieces and then all this heavy stuff as much people. It's almost like single serving individual right. packets. That being right. said, there's also two rules of thumb on being popular and being good. And, um, I adhere to one rule of thumb and I call it the Leno Letterman rule. You can be Jay Leno 
who was the most popular late night comedian, mm -hmm. or you can be Letterman, who was not the most popular, but will be considered the greatest. So of much the two, yeah. right? Because he was anxious, because he had issues, because he did stupid things sometimes, because he had an opinion, right? Right, and so people revere him. When in fact, Leno was more popular. And right. is it the whole point to be popular? Right. So I'm much more prone to be like, I'm not as worried about being popular as I am being, I'd rather be really interesting to 10 people than have 20 people who like me, but could easily go someplace else tomorrow. Like being, being inoffensive is like the worst thing that you can be almost. It's like, if you're not bothering someone, you're not doing anything that matters. You know, if you're not being uncomfortable and making other people uncomfortable, you're rarely doing anything that's interesting. Can you listen to a podcast in your car? If you listen to a podcast in your car and you never have a moment where driving alone, you go, oh, that's bull. Yeah. Then I don't think you're going to stay with them for very right. long. Right. You know, it's just like with a friend who wants to have a friend who agrees with you on everything. Not a very interesting relationship. No, it's not an I'd, interesting relationship well, at I'd all. Purpose, this is what I don't get. I know a lot of people that stay away from, you know, wherever they're at. If they're on the left, they stay away from the right. If they're on the right, they stay away from right. the left. It's easy to create an echo chamber for yourself. Yeah, but, and, but I'm the same way. I don't have any interest in doing that. In fact, I enjoy listening to people that are on the other side of my thoughts sure. and opinions. Oftentimes, a lot more than the alternative. Like, I want to hear what people think. I on don't mind if somebody disagrees, but I, I like to listen to people that also have well thought out arguments. Well, yeah, they, give me I want to know yeah, why. Yes, yes, give me a reasoned argument. There's nothing I love right. more than to have my mind changed. R if you change my mind, I'm like, oh man, today was a good day. Does that happen? I, I, all oh, the time. Oh man, it is, it is one of my favorite you things. You have your mind changed? Yes. Oh yeah. Happens all the time. I'm looking to have my mind changed. Can you when give I me come an at example? You with, when, when I come at you, boom, 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 right. then you're going to have to change. If you can change my mind, then I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. That's always can a little point of pride. Can you give me an example of, when, of, of how you've had your mind changed? Because I feel like that's a I got, I, was, I got him to do a podcast. They, that was one. <laughs> PPA uh, image competition? Yeah. I was one of the leading advocates for making everything all scores. Okay. Now I am a leading advocate for getting rid of the scores. Is that right? Yeah. Who changed your mind? Um, largely myself, but also a few reasoned arguments. I, and it can be the simplest thing. I was talking to... Allison Watkins, who's on the board of directors mm -hmm. of PPA. And it was at IPC one year. And I'm deep into what Gary calls the wizard state. The wi that's, when, that's when he's so focused on a thing that he cannot be deterred from it. And yeah. he goes, he's like, get someone a soapbox. He's in the wizard state. He's just chanting just, a spell. Yes, chanting a spell. <laughs> and I'm deep into it. I, I'm deep into it. We've got to do this. And we've got to have these numbers. And we've got to do this. And we've right. got to do this. Da, 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 da. And after I'm just, just, you know, like towering over her, you know, and, she, and she's just sitting there taking it. And I go, da, da, da. and she goes, and she goes, and she goes, yeah, but you know what? First of all, Boure, it has to be fun. Mm. And it floored me. That was it. I was like, oh my God. She cut you off at the knees. I, I just spent 20 minutes arguing for why we should do something. And never once did I have the argument that this would be more fun for the people involved. Right, right. And the number one thing should be that. Right. And, and I had to, and I backed off and I was like, yeah, you're, oh. Yeah, you're right. I'm not so sure that would be more fun. It would be more authentic or more accurate or technically correct, but I'm not sure it would be more fun. Right. And that's the first priority, and it totally, totally flipped me around. I think it says a lot about you as a person that you're that you're able to do that. Well, that's nice of you to say, but believe me, there are many times I don't do it, and it drives Gary and other well, my, my friends crazy. I was just, I, I, I want to say this as you were talking earlier is that. One of the little points of pride I know that I feel really good about myself when I get Bure to recognize a good point. And he always will, but it's always got to be really well thought out and you got to have more information than him and you got to have thought of something that he hasn't thought of. And that doesn't happen that often because he goes deep right. into everything. He just, <laughs> into, I've never, and he knows more than you about whatever it is you're arguing about. And if he doesn't, then you'll win. But it's very, it's very hard to be more informed on a topic that, because he goes like, deep into the Star Wars Wikipedia page. Like, <laughs> I do not. You do, I mean, you just like, you're down a rabbit hole and then you know. Yeah, like, he goes through no, phases no. of becoming obsessed with certain things and you're like, so those of us around him who are his friends is like, did he give you the both barrels on that? Yep. He, I guess, like, and then it tapers
tapers off and then he'll find something else, you know? He, I, you, because I play the other side. If I think something, I immediately start trying to argue the other side with myself, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then counter that argument, uh-huh. you know, or, and if I can't counter that argument, well, then maybe I need to reconsider my argument. Mm-hmm. There, you, know? you know, and this is a thing that, that we love, both love and sometimes are frustrated by because he just does obsess about stuff. But I do want to, there was, there's, he, in the same way, he's also intensely obsessive about encouraging other people. And one of my memories is we lost my, my granddad this past year. Mm-hmm. And this was a man who was incredibly important to me. I was very close with him. And I saw him the day before he died. And when I walked out the room, I was like, that was the last time I'm ever going to see him. And I knew it. You knew that. I yeah. knew it. And then he passed away. And I was just... It's really hard for people to understand. A lot of people don't understand a close grandparent relationship and mm-hmm. how much that that can mean to you. And in my situation, which we don't want necessarily to go into, let's just say this man was really important to me. Yeah. And nobody's really like, you say my grandpa died. People are like, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what's for dinner? You know, if you say your mom died, they go, oh my God. Yeah, and they want to listen deal, about it. Right. So like, it's a little more removed. And so Bure stayed up for like six hours on Skype with me, getting drunk on Skype or watching me get progressively drunk on Skype, <laughs> talking, me, listening to every, and I was babbling and crying and he was just there, you know, anytime I'm in, I'm in a dark place, he's the guy. He will always talk you out of it. He has a hard time doing that for himself. This is the second time you said this this week. But he's very, very good. You said to me last night too. Yeah. Because you, you thought you'd had a bad show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that my talk that my platform I gave last night, I was pretty disappointed in my performance. Overall. Yeah, I, but, he, but you're right. It's not. I'm not conscious of it, but I was almost late. I was late to meet with someone today because I had a critique, and I did the critique with this uh, lovely woman. But I could sense that the real problem was not the images; mm. that there was a crisis going on someplace else, mm. and and I wanted to pull that out of her. And when I finally got it out of her, it was something I was very much familiar with, which was her opinion that because she wasn't scoring well in competition, that it was some sort of a statement on her ability as a photographer. Yeah. And I had to go, oh, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let me tell you something. That ain't what competition That's, is right. at all. And if I'm not letting you go until you believe me. If right. she had been listening, this is what really happened. You know, a scene in a movie when they're walking through the jungle and somebody steps on a landmine, you hear that click. <laughs> when you hit on a topic like that with Boo-Ray, you just stay still so you don't explode. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're a billion, is, yeah, uh, I'm, you know, no. Are you, are you selling yeah. your product? Do people like it? Are your clients like it? Do you like it? Is it what you are happy doing? Yes, yeah. and congratulations. You're a good professional photographer. Right, right. And don't let anybody tell you that you aren't. I love it. Yeah, he will take the opposite side of whatever crisis you're going through, and by the time he's done with you, he will make you feel bad for having ever felt bad. (laughs) That's the thing. I'll make you feel like an idiot for having had those thoughts, and you'll be like, "Oh God, I can't believe I I can't believe I ever had those thoughts." (laughs) Yeah, it's like an emotional enema. It's real good, (laughs) real, real good. Yeah, absolutely. If you've ever, if you get down, Jed, you just call Boo Boo. I come right at you. Call me up. I'll be like, "You are crazy. Are you out of your mind for thinking that?" Oh yeah. I've, ne- I've never been logic out of a depression before until I, yeah, I can, I can <laughs> do that. Out of a, yeah. <laughs> but adversely, no one can talk me out of it. No, when that's you're absolutely true. When you're in it. Yeah, if I'm in it, you're not getting me it's, out. It's a gift that he can give to everybody but himself. That's absolutely yeah. you're not getting What do you, what do you get down on? Oh, God, what do, what do people not get down on? What do you get down on? Oh, you're not doing that to me, you evil, evil demon. Well, I want to know. You are. I've listened to your podcast. I want to know what you get down about. All right, Oprah. You guys are both making this big deal. No, I want to know. I want to know. I want to hear, I wanna hear what Gary says about. I get down about. Okay. Oh, see, now you're going gonna to end up editing this probably. No, Go ahead. I think, that, um, I think that you worry about your age. I do, yeah. I, I think you worry about, about my age. It doesn't help that you've started referring to me as an old man. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa Boo. Um, do you really about, worry about your age? Yeah. Sure I do. How old are you? 45. Yeah, you're not there yet. I think he's, he, feel, he worries he's past What's his there? prime. Yeah. He worries he's, he's missed his shot at, at being a relevant person it's in not, the industry. It, it, it's not necessarily, it's not, a, and, and, and this, is, this is, you know, midlife crisis stuff. Every guy that goes through this, and I'm not really going through it now. So no, much. you're past midlife. I went, through it, I went through it about five or six years ago. <laughs> but, of course, me, I overanalyze everything. And I'm like, why is this? What is this happening? What are you really feeling? Why do you feel this? And when you think about it, it starts to become this thing where you spend your whole life thinking about there's always someday, you know? I'm not doing anything right now or whatever, but in your mind, you daydream. 
Someday I might have that cool apartment or someday I might have that car or someday I might be this person or someday I might have that body or whatever. And those are the very superficial things, but there's deeper things too. Right. And then you reach a point in your life where you realize you're at someday. You missed it. I get it. And even if you didn't do it, you suddenly realize, oh, now I'm looking back on my life. I'm Mm -hmm. not looking forward. Now, there is still stuff to look forward to, but you see opportunities come along and you realize that may be something that's kind of shut off to me just because of my age. And you feel bad about that. And then you realize, oh, go talk to a woman about things being cut off because of something that she has no power over. They've been dealing with that her whole life. So shut up at crying about it, but you still feel it. You know, so that's the thing when he talks about that. Yeah, I get upset about um, ageism that I see or, or, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, you're going to run into it. You know, the millennials, the, the folks that are 25 coming in to talk to you about shooting their wedding and you're 55. Yeah. You know, they're looking for an experience and a connection. And you're like, I could be your dad. Yeah. You know, which is why I've started moving more into bar mitzvahs, because now I'm dealing with mom and dad, doctors and lawyers and professional people right. who really respect and want a professional Hello, right. here I am. Right. You know, I can just be who I am to them, whereas to the kids, I've got to try and be more of, that's awesome. I like Smashing Pumpkins too. <laughs> yeah. Know? Wow. Well, first of all, if you can find uh, one of your wedding clients, it's a big Smashing, smashing Pumpkins fan. Just, just, that's actually a reference uh, to, I was just, <laughs> there's a movie. That's a movie reference? Yes, that was a movie reference, and the movie is Bowfinger, and in the movie, Steve Martin is trying to hook up with the very young Mm. Heather Graham, Mm. and just mirroring everything she says, Mm. she's like, do you like this? He's like, I do, and she goes, and she goes, and she goes, you love smashing pumpkins? And he goes, I love doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what that was referenced. I've never seen Bowfinger, but I know. You thought it was just a mistake in the musical genre, but it was I I just thought you reached for a thing, and you you grabbed the wrong thing. And it grabbed the wrong thing. Well, here's the thing is it's okay to be irrelevant <laughs> and to not know a thing. I, I actually had a thing with Rich Newell from PPA a few years back. We were at IPC and I couldn't name a single active NFL player. Like I literally couldn't name one. I was like, is, is Emma Smith still playing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is that right? Uh, OJ Simpson. <laughs> I can name, I can name one or two, but like, that's Jerry about Rice it. is retired, yeah. isn't he? I, I stopped watching football because I was doing stuff on Sundays. I don't know. I think Bure also... I think that you don't see other you don't see yourself how other people see you because no I think, you can't see yourself the way other people see you anybody, your head will explode I don't think no. I don't think that anybody looks at you and thinks of you as your actual age I don't think anybody that knows you that's nice yeah that's nice you know but it doesn't help that I'm a guy who uh, spent most of his life all right let's get down into it. I'm a guy who spent most of his life equating a lot of his self-worth to whether or not he could get women to like him. Is that right? right? I think most guys, right? Uh, They've got a little bit of that. It's certainly always a big factor. It's always a big factor. For some guys, it's more than others. You know, I just, I want to flirt. I want women to like me. I'm happily married and I love my wife, but I like the idea that I might still have a little juice, right? (laughs) And now I hang out with this guy and all I ever hear is about the women who have crushes on Gary. I never hear about and that. And I've reached a point. I'm damn sure not telling you. I, I, and I've reached the point. <laughs> no, what? I've reached the point. You know, it's probably better that way. Yes. yes. Yeah, sure I've, reached, better that I've way. reached the point where. Yeah, don't put that in my head. Where, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, suddenly I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, Grandpa, he's funny. Oh. Yeah, and it's rough. And now you're going to be there, my friend. Trust me, everyone gets but there. And, I, and, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm crying, in, but it's nothing compared to what women go through. Nothing compared to what women go through. See, this is also him taking that side of it to try to get women listening to the show to like him. <laughs> Not true at all. You do seem to have some strong feelings. I that, do. I for the, very strong for feelings. I have very strong feelings. The feminine piece. I'm very strong. Well, I have two daughters. Oh, and well, a very str- And a very strong wife. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That makes so, sense yeah. to me. So, you know, I mean, you, listen, you're a uh, old white guy in America. You really shouldn't be complaining too much about your lot in life. Yeah, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> I don't disagree with that <laughs> yeah. one bit. You know, come on. Really? It's not that bad. 
No. Like, it's fine. Like, even even our worst days, probably, probably pretty good. It's the little things that people get upset about where they're just like, oh, what, like the old joke about being on the airplane and the guy gets upset because the Wi Fi is not oh, working. Oh, yeah, it's a loose And yeah, the Wi Fi is not working. Like, why? Everything's it didn't amazing even, it, and nobody's yeah, happy. Yeah, everybody's yeah. amazing and nobody cares. We do yeah. live in the most amazing time to have ever lived, and people seem the least happy that they've ever lived. Exponentially. Yeah. Yeah, it's, exponentially. It's, yeah. It's exponentially amazing compared to how things were although, 20 years ago. Although, here's the thing, though. Do you know how happy everybody was 20 years ago or 40 years ago or 50 years ago? I think that we have like what I call Saturday Night Live syndrome, which is where the, the era that you watched Saturday Night Live the most is the one that you think is the best and that cast. And then Saturday Night Live is always bad if you like an older version of it. But here's the truth about Saturday Night Live. It's always been 50% crappy. Yeah, fifty percent bad sketches, pretty much across the board ever since it existed. But you don't remember the bad sketches. Well, you don't remember the bad sketches because you don't see them anymore. Like you see a bunch of the highlights from the era that you're familiar with, and right. you're like, "See how awesome that was!" But you're only looking at the good stuff. So people people tend to think that the old days were always the glory days because yeah. guess what? Pretty yeah. much everybody used to be younger, stronger, also that fitter. You know, things yeah. used used to not used to have less responsibility. Yeah, it's an almost it's an almost impossible argument not to be able to make with someone most people if you ask them believe that things used to be better that things are worse now but they also believe that things will get better again it's yeah, almost and it's crazy things are awesome now it's you know compared to you think oh it was so much better in my dad's day no it wasn't mm. it was not at all mm. you know every, dad I, did not have netflix we've got two <laughs> we got two cars there's a tv in every room of my house i can just Ask for things and they appear magically from Google and Amazon. Whatever music I want. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It is awesome now. Yeah, it they're having awesome to redo now. the entire like this is the future carousel of progress at Epcot because all the stuff we have now is better than better any than what's there. there. <laughs> like, yeah, better True. than the future that they imagined back in 1970 or True. whatever. You know. True. I'm gonna sign off on this because I have another question to ask you that we can't record. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I just want to say that Finally. half the questions you have asked that we've recorded, I would prefer not be out there. <laughs> <laughs> they might not be. This, this will be this will be fairly fairly edited. I think I'm you sure. avoided real talk pretty well. Yeah, I, I try. <laughs> yeah, you did I pretty do my good. best. You're not going to get Bourrey to tears. He's uh, his, his, his defense mechanisms are too strong. Oh, that just happens. It's never my goal, but I don't mind when it does happen. You like to make Thank people cry. <laughs> you <laughs> sick man. <laughs> Thanks for doing this with me, guys. You're quite no problem. Uh, thanks for having us.